take that Komodo dragon. <laughs> Mom's like, uh, you know, maybe the only answer is that there is no answer. To which Dad says, "Look, we can turn away from this kid, or we can turn to him." And I'm like, "Are we back on that conversation now? Did the pages <laughs> stick together in the script? What the fuck just happened?" You have a feeling that during this movie, a lot of people yelled, "Keep rolling!" <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we want to experience the same kind of disappointment as our lovers. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, Noah. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm doing good, Noah, but if we want to give people the same experience as our disappointed lovers, we have to end the episode now. <laughs> <laughs> it's already been too long for me. Well, yeah, there's there's that. So, well, no, I, I, I meant, yeah, I guess we should watch two-minute movies anyway, <laughs> at the very least. So We could start it up another ten minutes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're so funny. So, <laughs> it's because we love our listeners so much. <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched King's Faith, which is a clever title because the main character turned out to have the same last name, King, which was, which was great. And it's the story of a troubled teenager named Brendan King who does several things throughout the movie, none of which <laughs> matter at all. <laughs> Because God controls everything, and actions don't matter, and none of the plot connects to anything else. Whew. Yeah, I think you pretty much nailed it there at Eli. How bad was this movie? Well, if you love those feel-good movies where a white family takes in a black kid, but you're tired of being told how crazily, terribly racist those are, but you still want to be terribly, crazily racist, you <laughs> will love this movie. 50% blindside, 50% loving the bad man, it, it's loving the white man. I don't really. It's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a theory about this movie. And normally I would save something like this for the end. But like when you're a writer and you're trying to get published or something, once in a while you'll see like, hey, Wisconsin Magazine is accepting submissions for stories set in Wisconsin. So you, know, you go through this story that you're trying to publish and change a bunch of street names, add some cheese and cross your fingers. And it felt like that's what we were getting here. Right. This was just a like, you know, taking in a troubled teen story. And they're like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. And finally, the guy's like, what if it was a Christian movie? And just as lazily as possible, just dropped in Christian movie shit randomly within the script, even if it doesn't make any sense within the dialogue that's happening at the moment. Yeah, he had Siri do it. Well, see, now I have a, a very different theory about how this movie got made. I think this movie was always a Christian movie, but I think it was a black kid. And then there was a meeting where they were like, hey, um, guys, this is g gonna be a race thing because then all the bad guys are black. And then at the end, we sell him <laughs> at an auction. <laughs> and they were like, what if he was white? And everyone was like, no one will suspect. <laughs> I truly believe that. I 100% believe that was the case. I think, yeah, I think you might be right. You know. Um, now, is there anything that you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, no. Th this movie is <laughs> aggressively mediocre. It's not the best or worst at anything. My reaction to like every moment it was just meh. meh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is a great movie to play Plants vs. Zombies Hearthstone to. That's all I can tell the audience. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with best worst sudden terrible message in a movie we get yes. some hard right turns but this movie is worryingly just like a feel-good kid from the wrong side of the tracks blah, 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 for about 40 minutes and then it takes a quick right turn off the rails and then gets right back on again and never <laughs> acknowledges it it's pretty <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> Well, my best worst relates to that one though i was gonna go with best worst unrelated unresolved side plots this movie is like listening to old people tell stories. Like you get to the end and you're like, why did we take that tangent? What did you think I was wondering how they made escalators back then just <laughs> <Yeah>. now? 
no reason for any of the things to happen because of the other things. No. Just nonsense. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's a collection of scenes. <laughs> that sense. Technically. <laughs> this All this right. is the movie equivalent of a Donald Trump book report. Oh, it's going to be the best. <laughs> He's the best kid. He loves Jesus. And uh, there's lady, the bad guys. But, uh, they're killing each other. There's fires. Streets are terrible. But then we're going to It's the best. Treasure chest full of drugs. No, it'll all make sense. I think Women are worth money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this movie has nothing to say in a long time to say it. So before we venture out on this uphill climb, we're going to pause for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll tackle all the tangentially related scenes that are King's Faith. Here at God Awful Movies, we know that many of you are spending the holiday with your family. And for many of you, listening to this episode will be secret vengeance on Uncle Jerry, who told everyone he was grateful for Donald Trump. So to cheer you up for this week's Blue Apron ad, we're joined by the one and only Ray Comfort. Ray, how are you? Uh, hello, Heath. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I'm... Hi, Ray. So, so just out of curiosity, I know you're from New Zealand, but do you celebrate Thanksgiving at all? Afraid not, Hammett. I just don't have the cooking chops. Also, Turkey, as you know, is the minion of the devil. Thus, he starts his name with the crucifix and ends it with the Y of Satan-y. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, well, Rave, believe it or not, you can cook fantastic food year-round with Blue Apron. Sorry, hate to disagree with you, Seth, but no matter what I wear, and believe me, I've tried everything, I just can't seem to cook right. The oven gets hot enough and I just start screaming, you see, reminds me that no, I'm just like, no, Ray, no, Ray, Ray, Ray. Blue Apron, though, is a food delivery service. And they deliver ingredients and easy-to-follow recipes right to your door for less than $10 a meal. Really? Less than $10 a meal? And step-by-step -step instructions? <laughs> that seems even easier than a banana. Yeah, it, it sure does, Ray. So why don't you give that a try while well, Heath tells the folks at home how they can give Blue Apron a try. All right, everyone. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash godawful. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash godawful. Ray, you stuff the turkey with Bibles and spend 30 minutes asking the lettuce to prove to you the sun is hot. I sure did. I sure did, Cy Babe. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Now, you see these picture instructions? Could they just form all by themselves? Could they? Huh? Do I make sense? Tell me I make sense. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this flick off with some out-of-focus tragedy and a voiceover about starting again. And I gotta admit, I started this movie out hopeful. I mean, super duper Christian movie logo, credits made by an adult. I was into it. I was into it. <laughs> our, our standards are so fucking low now, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at this going like, I don't know, this looks like it could be pretty good, though. <laughs> no. 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 Um, but I did find it funny that the VO is saying, like, if you want to change, you gotta stop listening to the voices in your head. And the, the VO is saying this, which is <laughs> do it now. And, and and also, I mean, what if the voices in your head are telling you to change, which yes. they are right now? The VO is saying that basically. It, it's very confusing. Or telling you not to steal a lollipop. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of different good things those voices could be saying. Do you want to be Jehovah's friend, <laughs> or do you want to be Jehovah's enemy? You killed <laughs> Jehovah's father. <laughs> So, yeah, so basically what we're getting here is, okay, this, the, our main character was in a drug house that was raided once, and he's having, like, blurry tragedy flashbacks of it. Right, and his friend got shot and died. Yeah, and then we go into this, like, really painful effort at, I, I don't even know what they were going for, where he's going, like, everybody has their number, mine is 18. Yeah, this script written by Uri Geller, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Although, when he said... My number is 18. I wrote, mine is 12. This ankle bracelet is itchy. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, so apparently this is Brendan's 18th foster home placement, and they go so out of their way to make him such a bad... Like, he's like, you know, 18 foster homes, nine people I've murdered with a spoon, six <laughs> felony convictions, you know, whatever. It just Yeah. Yeah, it's like a fortune cookie. He has other numbers, too, that aren't 18. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, exactly. And how much did you guys want to see a scene of his 16th foster home? Just being like, so, 
You've been in 15 faucets. <laughs> wow. I feel like, what's, can you tell me what happened 14 times? <laughs> <laughs> And I want to say this kid could not possibly look less like prison hardened. They they went to the supermarket and got some tattoos out of the vending machine for him and everything. But this kid looks like like Hayden Christensen's little brother or something. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe that you're a hardened criminal when you have such perfectly groomed Groucho Marx eyebrows. And I spend <laughs> most of the movie staring at them. <laughs> That said, he does, during this montage, take off his shirt and do some pull-ups, at which I realized, yes, I would in fact be able to jerk off to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a tramp stamp. We, I think that's the point of this. Part. And I, I think it said avocado, or for a second I thought it said avocado, which is a weird thing. I, I actually stopped it, went back and paused it. It says Avenue D, which is his gang. Oh, see, I was thinking that the guy that was fucking him in prison was, you know, trying to make guac. <laughs> oh, I just that would, that would make sense too. Yeah, yeah. It's a recipe. <laughs> to be fair, you don't want Avenue D written across your back. It doesn't bring to mind a street in the quiet part of town. It brings to mind that this is where the D goes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or a puppet musical about that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly at best. But before we get to that, we have to meet his new foster family, Allstate Delroy Lindo and his wife Mrs. Could have done better. Oh, they're attractive older people, though. Definitely. I had a weird thing with it. Like, certain angles, I really had a thing for the mom. But, yeah. See, I have Crossbred Kermodo Dragon and Jada Pinkett Smith and Melting Danny Glover. So, mm, like, yeah, attractive. no, I exactly. feel like that we're both saying the same thing, yeah, but with different super words. Super attractive. Also, if you were hoping that this actress would do a whole bunch of moving of her face throughout this movie, no, no, no. The surgery has taken that from her. <laughs> this is someone who, if she blinks hard, the back of her head rips open. And this first scene is the perfect example of it. The dad is like, oh, well, you know, I teach at the high school, exposition, exposition. And honey, how long did you work at the school as a school nurse? And she was like, that's a little private, don't you think? And he's like, oh, all right, well, <clears throat> Not uh, sure. Why? I'm too <laughs> old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we get him, like, unpacking and doing some pull-ups and, of course, studying his Bible. Like, mm -hmm. this movie was, like, making a lot of effort to say over and over again, no, 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 Christian, 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 <laughs> don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off, Grandma. Come on, Grandma. Look at the Bible. Ooh, he's reading it. <laughs> don't you wish your grandson would read it? You keep giving him one for Christmas. So then we cut to his first day at school where the principal is making it clear that he ain't taking no shit. Yeah, the principal basically, I mean, look, I know he's like a troubled kid and this is the troubled kid gets the talking to beam. But the principal's like, so if you drink or smoke weed or get in a fight or don't come to school, our, we're a school with rules is, I guess, what I brought you in here to say. <laughs> uh, did you go to a school without rules before? No, this is how everyone thinks. All right, moving on. Uh, I'm a PC. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and they throw this in really like subtly as though we, we shouldn't get pissed off about it or whatever. The fact that they that like apparently he's doing his community service with the faith club. Right. Like he's been court ordered to Christianity, essentially. Yeah. You know. um, and that, that'll happen multiple times in this movie. And they'll just be like, yeah, you know, sometimes you got to go to the religious thing because you were sentenced by a judge. Look. Sometimes you misbehave and you gotta switch religions. It's just part of growing up. <laughs> Please, crazy billionaire, remake this money, except it's Muslim Club. And yeah, he's just right. Like, I don't know about praying. And they're just like, come on, man. It's, it's only fun. five times a day. <laughs> and then Chris shows up and Chris basically enters this movie by going, Hey man, notice you got a banana in your lunch. Would you like a second banana? Schmack <laughs> banana. <laughs> Uh, I, I have mean, no stakes. Like, the, basically, the principal <laughs> says, you know, like, okay, you know, you don't smoke weed or uh, drink alcohol on school campus. Here's Chris. He'll be your best friend. <laughs> here's That's your assigned they... best friend. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's here's your first girlfriend. <laughs> I need you to break up with her by sophomore year. And then that that over there, uh, that's going to be your junior year girlfriend. And that's going to get weird. Look at me. Look at me, Brandon. That's going to get weird. <laughs> All right? And Chris is trying so hard to do that thing that Christian movies do where they make the Bible club not seem like it's terrible. He's like, oh, yeah, that guy who took you in, he's pretty cool. He runs the Bible club. You could say it's pretty dank. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then of course we have to end this whole thing with his like uh montage of wandering through extracurricular activities and sitting on the bleachers all de- dejected and alone or whatever right and i know that this what the movie's trying to do is like a, this kid just can't fit in because he's so troubled and he comes from the wrong side of the tracks but he looks like a mutant from xavier's school where the only power they have is date rape so it doesn't work he's just some <laughs> preppy high school musical dropout being like home now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right, right. I don't think they're going for, like, creepily watching girls play tennis, but that's what they land on. And now we're on to Seekers Club. But, uh, yeah, they're talking about all the wily Satan antics and biblical hijinks and whatnot uh, at Bible Club. And then after Seekers Club, we get them all stuffing envelopes together where we meet the girl that I most want to fuck in this movie, uh, dorky Bandcamp chick. Oh, dorky. I call her Pigtails Girl. Pigtails, Pigtails Girl is the before in the movie where it's like, oh, I'm just your nerdy best friend. You'll never mm-hmm. think of me that way. Pigtails come out. <laughs> and I feel like this actress, like they shot that scene so that this actress would play along with the rest of the movie, but she just stays in that state. Like the rest of the movie, everyone else is just like, her, we're just friends. And I'm like, hey, dude, uh, left one o'clock. One o'clock, my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, I love too when she starts hitting on him. She's like, uh, you know, so Brendan, tell me about it yourself. And he's like, well, I, and then Chris interrupts and he goes, he doesn't talk much. I'm like, maybe that's because you keep interrupting him, you fucking asshole. He was trying to answer her. <laughs> and also, this is when Chris, um, pitches his clean, his Christian volleyball intramural league and his Christian alternative <laughs> rock band. Yeah, well, some alternative and some Christian punk. Can't wait for that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, 30 seconds on the clock. Christian punk bands, go. Oh, shit. Deicidal tendencies. Uh, Kettle of fish. (laughs) Um, (laughs) The clashes to clashes. (laughs) The abstinence pistols. Uh, (laughs) Abstinence only pistols. uh, (laughs) Through my hands. (laughs) Um, Good religion. (laughs) Smashing pornkins. (laughs) All right. That, that was, was that, that was an actual 30 second <laughs> version of 30 seconds on the clock. Amazing. This is why we write them down everybody at home. <laughs> <laughs> I did my mime down. That's just as good as I can do. Um and, and, and then we head back home where we're going to meet old white cop guy who you really have to be paying attention to know that he's a cop, but one way or the other you have no idea who the fuck he is, but he's at the house that adopted or is foster parenting uh Brendan Right. And old white cop guy, look, you know how in like three months there's going to be a video that comes out of Mike Pence and Donald Trump double teaming a girl while she's painted gold? (laughs) After that, when he has to drop out of all politics and draws a pencil mustache on, that's what this cop looks like. He looks like trying to hide his identity, Mike Pence. I think you mean reelected, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. He, He looks like half Anderson Cooper, like top half, and then half pirate porn extra <laughs> he's pretty rough i had butch anderson cooper there too like early in his career anderson cooper got you know had to had to play a butch cop or something and ate too many famous bulls when he realized that that's where he was in life <laughs> anyway so yeah but this is where we learn that yes that lewis who they've keep keep mentioning is definitely their dead kid um and russell the the cop wants their dead son's foosball table i'm thinking to myself that is a damn indelicate question such a dick move like let me get his playstation and his foosball what (laughs) get out of here oh what is he using it (laughs) well right well that's the because that's the thing he's like well i see you gave your new foster son lewis's old car if you're giving away dead kids shit i want in we've known each other for a while (laughs) he starts running around the house dibs (laughs) <laughs> are we doing a sticker thing what are we doing let's make this fun <laughs> also on his way home he sees a shot that we will get no less than six times throughout this oh movie oh my god a uh, monoatomic gold-eating jada pinkett smith putting flowers on a grave and in case you're wondering hey that's too subtle i don't know what that means don't worry the movie will show you 875 more times so now we get this weird creepy scene where brendan comes to it into his bedroom and russell the cop is just sitting on his bed leafing through his bible it's so amazing he's like hey (laughs) 
Hope you don't mind. Because, like, he's suspicious of Brandon. That's the other thing that we learned in the breakfast scene before. And he's like, hey, well, you don't mind that I'm in your room, do you? Made a snack, jerked off on your pillow. You know, the usual. And he was <laughs> sitting on the bed. I wanted him so badly to spin the bed around like a Bond villain stroking a white police dog. <laughs> That is the only thing that would have made this scene more cliche, yeah. And he even admits it. He goes, look, I know what you're thinking. This is a tired and boring movie trope. And you're right. <laughs> but I like the thing Noah and Heath and Andrew do that Eli's not allowed to do because he tried to name his team a racial slur. So <laughs> I know statistics. Yeah, he brings up fantasy football here and that actually kind of pissed me off because I was like, well, how am I now supposed to record this episode without talking about my incredible six game win streak that's left me tied for first place with Andrew only seven points back from six and three, seven and three now. And that's going to piss off a bunch of listeners. So and me, because I have like a hundred more points than that. I yeah, don't have a do. way better record. You totally do. But the guys from Mythicist Milwaukee are getting so much more fucked than anybody else, so I, I just don't know how you can feel. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, th but I'm not talking about that anymore, or we'll start losing patrons. <laughs> <laughs> we lose two patrons for every minute I spend talking about fantasy football. I've done the math. <laughs> so anyway, the key here is the cop doesn't believe that Brendan is Christian enough to turn his life around. Right, and literally, he basically goes, look, kid, you're a rat that came from a hole... And you're going to drag everyone down into the hole you were in. Anyway, nothing personal. I just wanted to let you know, like, statistics say Rat you're a garbage hole. person. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> and those folks, they those guys who took you in, never took a shortcut in their lives. Takes them forever to get anywhere. Weird, actually. <laughs> uh, just giving you a heads up about that. Yeah, and if he's a stats guy, so, like, 90% of kids like Brendan, you know, go back to jail or whatever, like, is there anything in your stat book about the success of praying or the theme yeah. of this movie or, no? Yeah, All and right. also, of course, we get to reveal here that their son was a cop, Lewis, who was killed in the line of duty. Cue the strings. Literally. Yeah. Literally cue the strings. Yeah. But the way the line is delivered, he goes, their son, he gets right up in his face, he goes, their son was a cop who got killed in a... Routine traffic stop. And I wanted him so badly to be like, so don't shoot them in a routine traffic stop. <laughs> like, that's what it was like a warning as opposed to like, this is a thing. This is information you need to know. It was like right, him being like, right. I'm eyeing you. So and then we cut to him driving around with the most lazily introduced friend character in cinematic history when his sordid past starts to come to light. But Chris has the weirdest way of introducing it, he's like, hey man, a bunch of the kids said you like got arrested in a drug raid and went to jail. And Brandon's like, yeah. And he's like, don't worry, pussies will soak. You smell that? You smell that pussy? <laughs> you smell that pussy? And Brandon's like, this is a weird way to tell me that everyone at school knows I'm a felon. And he's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Look, a car crash. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, the love interest is on fire. <laughs> And he like looks through the window and she's knocked herself out against the window and we get a shot of she's got like a bird tattoo and I wrote, Save her, Brandon, she'll fuck the shit out of you. Tattoo on the neck, do it, Brandon, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so once again for the eight hundredth time we see a car window smashed in one of these movies. It's like the most it's the most expensive thing they can afford to break, I think. That's it. They can afford like exactly one car window full of sugar glass or whatever. And so they do it in all of these movies. So, yeah, he saves the lo love interest. And uh, when the cops are like, you know, cleaning things up afterwards, they find that she had drugs in her car. This will mm. not matter. She was pilling. Yeah, exactly. So next day he's on the news for being all heroic. And I thought to myself at this point, somewhere in the world, there is a script by numbers that the writers of this movie do not want you to find. <laughs> I wanted the cop to show up and be like, so, heard you tried to kidnap a girl already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but of course the dad is looking at him going like, uh, well, you know, that was no accident. Uh, God has a plan. That plan includes murdering my son. So it's not a good plan. Not a good plan. But it's, it's an plan. Eli using MapQuest he's printed out kind of plan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you end up in Ohio. It doesn't matter if you're going to Ohio. You end up in Ohio. So then we head back to the school where uh, we, we have Brendan like sitting in the uh, classroom or whatever. And he looks out and he sees this suspicious black van outside. Ominously. But then we move away from that so Chris can come in and talk about how famously fuckable they are now. 
and he he goes, "Hey man, you you too famous to talk to me?" Of oh, what's my name? I forget. I don't matter. Even a little. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm here to inf- uh, deliver information. You saved the homecoming queen. She's from the right side of the tracks. You're from the wrong side of the tracks. And that's my lines for the scene. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> And and then we get what I guess has to be the most bizarre scene in this. Well, no, it's not, but at least the most bizarre scene so far. This is where he we cut to that night where he's like now waking up in a room full of hoodlums. And it's like, hey, Brandon, you've already had one guy just show up in your room. Maybe get a lock on that bedroom. I think it's time. <laughs> I love to. This is where we discover that the bad guy's name in this movie is Eli. Yay, Eli! I love that so much. Yeah. Now, the other guy's names are Rish and Big Lex. So just pick better names all around. It's not, not, that, you know. <laughs> not that hard, guys. And and apparently these are the old gangsters he used to run around with, and they're all out of jail now, and they're angry at him for looking so Christian and clean cut. And there's this amazing moment where he goes, look, man, I seen you go pit bull. And I, I think that means, like, go wild and, like, beat people up. But I, for a moment, I was like, look, if this movie turns out to be a wear pit bull, I am in. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I am in. All right. We got to start working on that script as soon as we're done here. <laughs> but, yeah, like, so, but, like, like Eli sees his Bible. He's not impressed. And he's like, you know, I can't roll with the old crew. And Eli doesn't like that answer. So, it, finally, we come, it, it, it comes out that they're looking for... A treasure chest full of drugs, and only Brendan knows where it is. And we have all written how he introduces this treasure chest full of drugs in our notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not just drugs, but yeah, it's weed, cash, cane, mm-hmm. and liquor. Liquor? A stash <laughs> of lick, like old scotch this drug <laughs> gang has? What? <laughs> I just really wanted the list to keep going, though. Just like <laughs> liquor, Jim Baker buckets, <laughs> crayons, garbage pail kids. We need to know where like, McDonald's French Motherfucker, fries. this is an Optimus Prime new in box. You know what this is worth on eBay? I mean, it's dusty, but I'm with dusty. Hundreds. The only thing I was thinking was like, how differently does this scene play out if Brendan was beating off when they came in? Like, oh, fuck, dude, we were going to do this thing where we came in and you were asleep and we scared you. But now this is just awkward. Why'd you spin the bed around like that? That's weird. (laughs) You have a spinny bed. Why wouldn't you just keep it spun the other way anyway? Are you doing the posturepedic thing now? Why are you changing? Why are you elevating the feet? We don't want to. God damn it. Man, you got to get a Casper mattress. They're fantastic. (laughs) They are. And, uh, why do you have a silk scarf around your neck and your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, and it's important to point out Brendan's performance here is that he really doesn't know where that box is because there's absolutely no reason for him not to tell these characters where that box is. At the very end of the movie, we're going to get why he lets his friends go through hell, his projects get destroyed, his own safety be in danger, and it's because, and I don't think we're spoiling anything here, it's because he doesn't want those particular drugs back out on the street. But like, those aren't the only drugs. Brendan, did you think that was all the drugs left in the world, bro? <laughs> yeah, and the only reason we're not spoiling anything there, by the way, is because that's so fucking stupid, it can't be spoiled. But yeah, that actually is a big reveal later in the movie. But before we can get to that, we have to meet the love interest proper. Um, this is where Natalie is the character's name. She shows up at the locker to thank him. Um, and we learn that she, too, has to do community service because of the drugs they found in her car. So she has to go to Christian Club as well under court order. Right. And as though this scene is not insane enough, we see her mom having, I think, the most expositional and least subtle conversation oh we've heard in any of the movies we've ever watched. It was so fucking painful. So, yeah, the mom is just sitting there going like, well, you're an absentee father, so you don't know what she's doing. What is she doing? Risk behaviors of various sorts (laughs) in increasing numbers. It's like something happened six to 11 months ago that has significantly changed her personality. I can't. I've got to go. I've got to go. We can't reveal that until the end of act two. Yeah. Painful. 
Also, was I the only one who noticed that on this in this scene, like, because this is like her her getting into the car with her mom and driving off. Like, this is the girl that they just found in a car wreck, but neither of them puts on a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice that. I, it blew amazing. me away. <laughs> so and then, I, I, okay, so then we have to get the second detective Dwyer Russell, uh, the cop guy, showing up on Brendan. So Brendan's about to leave school, but Detective Dwyer shows up to hassle him a little bit more. In really weird language. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so this is exactly what he said, I think. I wrote it down. Oh, please. Um, he goes, all right, Brendan, uh, just want you to know some skater kid cracked up near the park, dropped a couple hits of acid. What? Like accusing him of – it's not clear though from any <laughs> – like crimes and drugs are completely foreign to these writers. They have no idea. Like some ruffians were – Squinching some wanna. <laughs> we found a titration in the park. You know what's up with that? What? It really is. He's he really does go like know anything about that? And he's like, wait, do you think I sold him the drugs or gave him the drugs? And he's like, I don't know, man. I don't even really know how someone would crack up from acid. I think I mean bad trip. I really, really don't know what I mean. And then when Brandon's like. I have no idea what you're talking about. Everything you just said is nonsense words. He like gets up in his face again and he goes, Hey, you remember that guy who killed the Stubbs' his son? I don't think you did it. But I think you're just like the guy who did it. Yeah. It's right. just, but he probably looks just like you. <laughs> it was a white guy. I'm pretty sure it was a white guy. <laughs> again, I am a hundred percent sure this started out with a black character and they were going over that line in the meeting to change this to a white guy and they were like, see? <laughs> Now it's not racist anymore. Guys, we're killing this. This was a really good choice. This was a really good choice. <laughs> yeah, I love, too, that like they throw in that like ominous. He's going like, you act like you're changed because of all of this. Jesus, I'm just waiting for someone to challenge you. Probably towards the end of Act 2. <laughs> and now it's time to party with Chris's band. And this is so... Okay, so we've already had like the convoluted contrived meet cute with these two of him like showing up when she had the the car wreck now we have to do that again because we're going to do the like she's in the background break, break it up with her boyfriend and then she goes to walk off and he offers her a ride so we've like now twice <laughs> come into yeah. like they already know each other we don't have to contrive a situation now yeah this felt like the actor like in real life had to chase her down because she forgot she still had lines that day <laughs> and he like just drove after her and was like get in the car you had like another page what are you doing just load load the camera in the car it'll be cool it'll be cool we'll like it and and yeah. she's walking along this like abandoned road in the woods and he's like hey you want to ride and she's like no thanks I'm gonna get murdered by a haunted scarecrow and he's like get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i love and she gets in and she's basically like so are you like really a hardcore drug kid or do you just love jesus like that's basically the fucking dialogue we're suffering through and you remember those pills from earlier turns out those were adderall that she was using to study for a test is that ever going to come up again no nope. will it ever matter no nope no it's, and, and again like you know, if the entire reason for introducing the Adderall is so that she has to have community service so that they have to meet, like, they've already met. We, again, we don't need to continuously contrive new, that'd be like, like me trying to, like, set up instances where I can run into my wife. It's <laughs> just fucking silly. Fancy meeting you here. Uh, you notice this cat over here wants us to both look at his butthole. That's crazy, right? <laughs> what, what do you do? Adderall now. What? <laughs> Why did you say that? No, I just want to let you know. <laughs> we know the names of some drugs, so we don't know the like slang terms for them. But clinically, like we can look that shit up. Yeah. So, so sh they have the like you know. I just want you to know I'm better than you. Um, conversation in the car. She drops him off, and then we have to go back to the school to meet her ex boyfriend Zach, who has to come up and kind of warn Brendan off of her. Right, but this this smack talk scene is so fantastic. He's like, hey man, uh, never got to thank you for saving my girlfriend's life, bro. And he's like, oh yeah, no problem, man. And he's like, yeah, just make sure that's all you save. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> there will be, there is a scene later, it, there, there are two scenes later, but one in particular uh, along that theme with this character that are among my favorite scenes that we've ever done on this on this fucking show for their random Christian hate. And now we cut to uh, Chris, and this scene is 
so phenomenal. And again, just yeah, if you watch the movies along with us, I really do want to know if you think that my bet theory is right and that this character was supposed to be black, but all of these scenes are super crazy racist if they're black. So they just <laughs> switch to white. They just switch to Jonas brother in at the last moment. <laughs> Because he's on nightchat.com, which is his high school, like, web page, I guess. And he sees people are talking about him. And then Bandcamp Girl shows up and she's like, um, hey, look, a lot of people are telling us that, like, you're from a garbage place. And I was wondering, <laughs> could you introduce us to, like, more poor criminal murders so we can, like, help them as a hobby? You mean black people? No, no, <laughs> no. You're, you're right. racist you for see? saying that. You no, we switched white. the roles. We switched the roles now. <laughs> it's not racist now, this movie. Oh, God, that makes so much fucking sense. That explains so much if this was just a racist rant that got turned white at the last minute. Absolutely. Yeah, and I love, too, because he's like, you know, like, oh, you're asking if I want to go back to the place where I know how to get all the drugs that I'm addicted to. And she's like, oh, yeah. Didn't think of that. But as she's leaving, she goes, I just want you to know, Brendan, we believe in you. And I wanted so bad for him to say, you know, that's sweet, but you guys believe in a talking donkey. So, well, not really. You know, I, statistics say nine out of ten chances you're going to murder me. So I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Take what you people. can get, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but then, but I guess he gets to thinking on it, on her proposal ish thing. Um, so then we get him talking to the, the dad, the foster dad, uh, about whether he should go back and try to help his old community. Yeah. And the dad's like, well, you need to do a cost benefit analysis. And I was like, yeah, I'd ask that nerdy girl what's in it for me too. But he was going a different direction. So I just want to say, <laughs> I miss, for a second, me and this dad were on exactly the same page. And then unfortunately we separated. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, Yo, do you, have you learned about cost-benefit analysis and economics class yet? I'm like, I would certainly hope so. He's 18. Well, and even if he didn't, those are self-explanatory words. Everybody knows the right? words cost and benefit, <laughs> right? <laughs> then he tells him about opportunity cost, too, which was kind of weird. Yeah, he goes, like, we're, we also pay for what we don't do. And, and then he goes, I know, I know, but we're going to need a tagline, and this is basically all we've got. So that's- I thought he was going to start talking about bumper crops for a second. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I just wouldn't have brought up opportunity cost there, like the opportunity cost of talking about doing good things for two hours every Sunday instead of actually doing good things for those two hours. And that's ignoring the horrible bigot stuff they also talk about and do. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Statistics, opportunity cost, not the kind of things you want to dwell on in Christian movies. And I love too at the end of all of this, where like they're trying. It's it's supposed to be the you know fatherly figure giving him good fatherly advice or whatever. But at the end, he goes, "Why don't you pray on it?" You know, nothing like setting aside rationality when you're making a tough decision and just doing whatever random thing pops into your head that you wanted to do anyway. Have you tried thinking, but instead of just like working it out, you pretend that your own head voice is magic? <laughs> hmm? I'm That's a stats how... guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> and we also learn in this scene that what the high school fundraiser is going to be is a bachelor bachelorette auction. And it Maybe I'm wrong here because the only other one I've ever heard of is the one in Groundhog's Day. But I always got like a fun wink, wink, nudge, nudge prostitution vibe out of a bachelor bachelorette auction. Am I wrong? <laughs> like I always assumed that it was like you get to go on a date on that person and maybe they'll fuck you. Was that is that not a bachelor bachelorette? Auction? I feel like I shouldn't tell you the correct answer, and I should I, well, just let you. Now I feel very silly about the amount that I bid on that bachelor. <laughs> and I understand the violent reaction he had to my advances. Okay, a lot makes more sense now. Also, I, I just want to say that, like, if you did this anywhere but the high school that I went to, the idea that high school kids would be listed as bachelors and bachelorettes would, would be a little odd. Well, it, it's not as bad as you guys are saying. That you're purchasing the person. It's not... Yeah. It's You were making out... Well, but no, but, but, but at, at the end, if, if they volunteer to let you drive an owl through their ear on the door jam, I think you get to keep them. So it's, so it's moral. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But no, okay. But then I the don't know is, what that's a reference to, but I want you to know I am into it. <laughs> <laughs> 
you gotta excuse me. My mic is now tilted away from me because my boner lifted my desk. <laughs> Bible porn is the best porn. Um, so yeah, so so, but she's basically saying like, hey, I want to get out of this Jesus Club as fast as I can. How can I do more community? service hours and she's like well you know i'm driving with your love interest into the city later on today uh to go to a rough neighborhood read black neighborhood and that would probably uh count towards your hours for some reason that makes no sense that's exactly what i wrote in my notes brandon's gonna take us to the ghetto to help out with the hmms you know the <laughs> with the you know what i'm talking about yeah, so so she goes off with them to Jesus together, and they pull up at this old crack house. Now, this is the house, I guess, where he was living where, when they got raided, but he just walks in, right? Doesn't, like, no knowledge of whether anybody lives there or still sells drugs there. <laughs> yeah. It's just Stephen Avery standing there over a dead body. Oh, cool. We'll just <laughs> back out slowly. Sorry. You didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him so badly to walk into the living room and turn to the Christian club and be like, okay, guys, remember, blowies are 20 with a condom, 50 without. No exceptions. Because <laughs> it's what this, tur- what this turns out to be is a field trip to where his friend died. Well, that, and that's it. Okay. So yeah, he apparently has just driven them out there to deliver exposition. Yeah, and they asked for people to help. Not a scared straight talk, which is what he gives them. He's like, you know, I used to kill men every day. I'd suck dick for crack in the alley. I'd eat my own vomit out of a dog bowl. And they're like, oh, fun. Should we clean up this house and turn it into a community center? And he's like, sure. You know a good place that removes blood? Nope, I sure don't. I'm a high school student. <laughs> Couldn't you have just told us this at the school and shown, shown no. us on Zillow or something? <laughs> no. Pictures? No. No, we had to go here. We actually had to drive and, to this neighborhood. And it's so ridiculous. Apparently, nobody's touched this place in like three years since the police raid. There's oh, they literally still a blood stain. There's still a blood stain yes. of his dead friend on the floor <laughs> that he points out. And the, the it's supposed to be messy in there. There's like all this furniture, but it's just like halfway tipped over. Like they had to yeah, glue right. it there to make this happen. <laughs> Why would that happen during a police raid? Why would there be furniture uh, at weird 45 degree angles like <laughs> modern art off the ground? Hey, so have stupid. you tipped all of the tables? I want all the tables tipped. Yeah. yeah. And and then we get this crazy moment before the scene ends, which is just insane. Like, look, there's lots of moments where a kid goes into an old house and it's like, guys, let's clean it up and we'll make it new again. And everyone's like, yeah. But then the scene continues with everyone being like, wait, but how does house buying work? And someone's like, I think it's back taxes. I'm not, I mean, I, I, I would have to see if the lease is transferred to the government. I wanted Andrew to pop up and just be like, okay, well, there's a couple of forms they need you to, and they're just like, oh shit, guys, we gotta become an LLC for this, but we're getting taxed as an escort. No, we are getting taxed as an escort. I went over this with you, Al. Just like 45 minutes of the boring minutiae of these kids buying a house. <laughs> we to actually fix get up. quite a bit of that, yeah. <laughs> well, and then also I love too that they like all sit around after they like come up with a great idea of renovating the house and they're like, oh, is there, would that even be possible? Possible? And one of them goes like, what's impossible for man is possible for God. And I'm like, I don't feel like home renovation really falls into that category. <laughs> like basically, if Bob Vila can do it, it doesn't qualify as a divine power, just as a general rule. I wanted so badly for them to do a TLC Extreme Homemaker, but they just leave it to God. And they're like, move that bus. <laughs> and the house is exactly the same. <laughs> Fuck you, God. Fuck you. Well, we heard you like horses, and we thought God would make you a horse room, but turns out he was busy. God made us still a crack house. All right, we'll figure something out. (laughs) And I just want to point out, at this point in the movie, we are 36 minutes in. There are no stakes, there is no conflict, and there is no plot. So anyway, so we we, we show – he's back uh, like chatting with – the foster dad with us, and and this is where Natalie shows up for meet cute number four – Again, they're acting like these two characters have never met before in this scene. But there's this amazingly creepy moment with Dad here. He goes, look, you know, kid, as long as you work hard, God will provide. And then Natalie walks over and he goes, speaking of God, God damn, boy. (laughs) All right, I'm going to get out of here. She's a child. (laughs) 
certainly didn't stop me. Yeah, but she is so <laughs> inspired, I guess, by his story that she's been like unable to sleep trying to think of ways that they could fund buying this uh, the the house. And she's like, you know, I was thinking about your your life story, and I was thinking maybe we could, you know, whore out some high school kids. And he's like, <laughs> and I wanted him so badly to be like, nah, man, I've done that. Trust me, it's a whole thing. You got to catch them. It's like, oh, you see the movie Mystic River? It's a pain. The parents I'm saying it's keep a pain. showing up. <laughs> Yeah, but of course, like at the end of this scene, we see that the evil van of people are there again um, here at the schoolyard. Eli is waiting in a van at the school parking lot. Where have I heard that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, fun it seems joke. Like there's a story in, about that. But, and uh, then in the movie, and then in the movie, <laughs> what happens? Edit this out, Morgan. Edit this out. <laughs> So I also love my music note here is these people are bad. So there's rap music when we see them. Oh, my music note was you better be careful. Eli's going to sick the vultures of horror on you. <laughs> <laughs> they should have switched it out to Eminem. Make the movie. Less, yeah. Yeah. No, there maybe. you go. Wouldn't be so racist to them. Yeah. So he walks over to the van and they start talking to Eli and his his crew. And Eli has a Chinese symbol tattoo next to his eye. Which I thought was excellent. I think it means teardrop in Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> but what we really have to learn here is that Eli is going to rape Natalie to death if Brendan doesn't tell him where the MacGuffin is. You know, because he's like, oh, where, where's that treasure chest full of drugs? I don't know about no treasure chest full of drugs. Well, then there is nothing going on in this movie at all. So how can we accept that? You must. So, yeah. And and then we go to this scene where they're like following up on the uh, on the house that they want to buy. Where they're, like, they're all watching him call the county clerk's office. Yeah, and picture this moment in the writing room where they turn to each other and they go, well, what happens next? I mean, I feel like the audience is going to want to see him call the county clerk's office and find out how much the house costs and how that paperwork <laughs> would be achieved. But, like, we only hear his side of the phone call. And they were like, good thinking, Brian. Good thinking. Absolutely. <laughs> Just, hello, foreclosed crack house real estate hotline. This is... Brendan, uh, what? And it's thirty five hundred dollars is what he finds out here. Mm -hmm. This very large house is on sale for thirty five hundred dollars, and that's bad news to these people. Well, right. What the fuck did they expect? Because he goes like, "It's going to be thirty five and the one kid goes thirty five dollars, and I'm like, "No, it's thirty five thousand, you jackass." And they go like, "No, thirty five hundred." I'm like, "Oh, well, holy shit! Uh. This is supposed to be a large building on Avenue D or somewhere near there in Brooklyn. And that's." An amazing price. Yeah, exactly. Let me just go buy that neighborhood. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. They were like, you know what, guys? Last year, our fundraiser raised exactly $3,500. And I was like, really? You should make fun of some people. <laughs> <laughs> Try handing out insults. Do <laughs> much better than that. Give Tom and Cecil a call. <laughs> Charity is not a virtue. <laughs> So meanwhile, back at home with the foster parents, we are learning that mom does nothing but – like there are two phases she has in this movie, doing flowers and giving dour expressions. She sometimes combines those two things, <laughs> but she's always always doing at least one of them. At this point, she's doing both so that we can have the scene where dad wants her to get back to work and get over her son's death already. Yeah. But she would rather talk about Brendan and his sordid past. Right. And, and the way he approaches this is he's like, you know, I know you love your garden, but maybe you could come back to school or church, you know, church. <laughs> <laughs> and I love too. She's like, well, that kid, though, he scares me. And she's like, he's like, well, he left that world behind the day he was saved. And I'm like, you guys still want to talk about recidivism rates in your movie? Because you brought that up earlier. Well, she brings it up. This is what's so absurd. She goes like, oh, is he magically better now? And the husband's like, yeah, that's our yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. No, that's read how this, it works. Read the script, woman. That's like our, <laughs> like the whole concept. Not just the script, but like the book. And it's all based on the magic <laughs> forgiveness the whole principle. whole infrastructure around this. I don't see It's if... hard to grow as a person. <laughs> So now it's time for Zach to establish himself a little bit further as a mini boss. This is where, uh, it, like, Zach runs into Brendan. Cause so, so Brendan's job is to cut the lawn uh, at the at the school or whatever. So and Zach is the star football player. So he runs into him while he's 
working, let's just say in air quotes, working on the lawnmower. Well, well yeah, he's just vaguely waving a wrench near a mower. That's <laughs> nothing. You bang with these? This is a banger, right? That's, yeah, perfect. So, so Zach shows up in his football gear. And this actor has no idea why he's wearing a large suit of armor. He's very confused by this. I understand. Is and, Zach a knight? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Zach's a knight. Get out there. Just say your lines. <laughs> yeah. And his lines are, he's offended about Natalie doing charity work. Is that the problem here? I d- uh, th- yeah. Yes. Again, all of Zach's motivation is so weird because all, all the things you think Zach's going to be bothered by, he instead very clearly explicitly states he's bothered by something that no one should be bothered by. He's like, hey, man. I hear you used to be a criminal. We don't take kindly to reformed types around here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then Brandon's like, "Good, you shouldn't." And he's like, "Good." He's like, "Are you sure this isn't about me having sex with your girlfriend? Are you sure that's not no, no man? No, no, it's, it's no totally, man. I have a different motivation. I think community service programs are harmful, especially ones that are based in religion. I think they conflate learning and recidivism with a religious background. <laughs> I'll see you out back." <laughs> so then of course we have to go to the rebuilding the house montage again we've seen 2600 of these and at this point like he comes across well, like during this montage he comes across the foosball table that uh the cop was trying to get the dead son's foosball table and i thought oh i guess at the end this will be in their charity house and i'm like nope i'm thinking this through more so than they were way more also way more. music note for this montage hey there delilah i'm an irritating christian now <laughs> I wanted so badly for one of these kids while they're cleaning to come out with a plastic bag full of teeth and be like, where do these go? And Brandon would just be like, that's mine. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're listening to uh, Take Up the Christian Man's Burden by Creed and they're fixing <laughs> out the house. And this was so weird. This tiny little thing. But there's a high-end ergonomic kneeling chair that they take out of the crack Yeah, house. what? <laughs> so weird. And plenty of other, like, really nice furniture why are they just throwing it out I, I i have no idea also um one other thing I, and i know this is like a big movie trip i know this type of scene requires a paint roller at some point but there's no reason to paint any of these walls the house was pretty much fine yeah no they but you have to have like somebody has to get some paint on their nose oh giggle also, giggle my my own personal pet fee but whenever they and this isn't just christian movies this is all movies but whenever anyone's painting they always just show someone rolling one spot on the wall they're not doing it right it drives me fucking crazy <laughs> yeah i mean li- literally all they needed to do is just tip all the furniture back into normal position and the house is fine <laughs> yeah. just unglue the weird position of the furniture they're all set well, they run a vacuum through there maybe yeah so now we, we, we go to him chatting with Natalie in the park, drawing on her cast. And this is where she has this, like, you're an orphan. How did your parents die moment? And he goes, like, drugs and sin and Satan. Not enough Jesus. Blah, 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 blah. I honestly, if this character had just gone, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, sure, thanks, movie. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate get it. your directness. <laughs> yeah, the dialogue is just so horrible. She's like, all right, so what happened to your uh, crack family? Sorry, sorry, that was. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what's the what's the worst thing you ever did? And he's like, not murder. She's like, okay, well now it's clearly murder. I was. <laughs> other than, now I think you're See, a murderer. I wrote in my notes when she was like, what's the worst thing you ever did? I wanted him to be like, oh, I raped this kid. I raped this kid. And I wrote like, in my notes, number one on my list of questions to never ask Eli. Yeah, right? <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's so weird because she like wanders off. He goes like, I never killed anybody. And she huffs off like, oh, well, I got to go. I was planning on you uh, hiring you to assassinate my dad. But now that's going to be super awkward. Or, or like she's going like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were all murderers up in here. Didn't realize you were such a lightweight. Yeah. And literally, like the scene is played in a way and this is going to pay off so beautifully. Oh, yeah. The yes. scene is played in a way. That he's like, well, I never murdered anybody. And she's like, mm, I've got to go. And I wrote <laughs> in my notes because I hadn't seen this movie. I was like, wait. Did she murder someone? Did she? And this is what I thought. It's not going to turn out to be true. I thought she had murdered the cop's son. <laughs> That's my, that was my theory. And it will, and up until it gets revealed, she enforces that theory. And I was loving this movie. 
there's some minor changes that could really improve this movie. So, yeah, so now she's trying to avoid him. So we have the first of our, our awkward her and Zach moments. This is by far just a tease to what we're eventually going to get. But this is like, you know, the part where she runs into him and he's mad at her for breaking up with him, but mostly for also becoming a Christian. Yeah, for hanging out with those Christians. It's so stupid. Like, how big are they? Are they bigger than me? Are the Christians <laughs> bigger than me? You're a theater, Tell me. <laughs> what? It's so good. And then we cut... To Eli and the crew staking out the Christian volleyball intramural tournament. <laughs> yes. Oh. I wrote my notes. Guys, you just need to know where Brendan hit his stuff. You don't need to like follow him around and watch him. <laughs> I wanted so badly for one of the guys in the car to be rooting for a team like, oh my God, come on. That's fucking bullshit, man. That's clearly on the line. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> they brought, that's someone's dad is the ref there. Hey man, we're supposed to be watching Brendan. I'm just saying, we've been here for an hour and a half. I got into yeah, the game. I'm kind of getting into this now. <laughs> Yeah, just this idea of these five fucking black tattooed gangsters in a dark van watching Christian teens play volleyball. It it, it seems like cops show up for this. Well, and just don't show the terrible volleyball. You oh, guys, right. I, so many illegal handsets with so much spin. They're double touching everything. Very frustrating. <laughs> just go to the next scene. Bingo. Um, so and then, of course, like in the next scene, this is where like he's walking away and Zach has to like fuck him up he goes like hey man what are you trying to do to my girlfriend save her soul that's the actual line and we're all like no that's uh do you really think that's what he was trying to <laughs> oh zach i got some bad news for you buddy also <laughs> here's what's so incredible between eli and zach and zach's friend like a third of this local town showed up to follow around brandon like i just picture a crowd of people the cop everyone's just like are you also following brandon oh my god well dude you got to get in the facebook group following brandon on facebook <laughs> well, it's a secret group. i'll add you i'll add you the admins are really cool they take troll posts down pretty quickly <laughs> Yeah, so this is where, like, Zach is about to beat him up. He's like, I'm not scared of your tats and your thug signs. Again, actual line. He's like, you know, and, and now that it's just, you know, you and me and my two buddies, how tough are you? And the, this is, of course, where Eli shows up with a gun. God, I've said that so many fucking times in my life. But this time, it's not as bad of news. Yeah, um, so now he, we're not describing it to Andrew. So Yeah, exactly. So I, he listens to this show. We are. But yeah, so Eli shows up, pulls a gun on Zach and uh, like scares him off or whatever. And it, uh, how is this part of the plot? This makes no sense. Why would Eli pull the gun on Zach? Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, it really, right. it really doesn't well, matter. Why would this not affect Zach? Why would Zach not report this to the police? Like, why does Zach <laughs> go home and he's just like, that was a terrible day. This man held a gun to my face. I think I'll tell no one and never act on it. <laughs> we were waiting there in line, a whole bunch of us ready to hang out with Brandon or whatever. He caught me, <laughs> pulled a gun on me. When I, it was unbelievable. Well, I love too because he's like, the uh, Eli, at the end of this, he turns back to Brandon and he goes, you don't get it, man. They're never going to accept you out here. I'm like, that is so gangsta of him to say that. It's all about acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. And at one point here, Eli threatens Brendan or whatever. He says, you didn't think we knew about your Bible club fixing up our old crack house? Obviously, that couldn't be a secret. It's right there. They live. These aren't real plot points. None of them. You can't just make up conflict. But again, it brings up the question. How much time does Eli spend watching Brandon? Like, because we didn't even see that scene. So we're just supposed to assume Eli was in a different crack house with binoculars. Look at that motherfucker <laughs> re-varnishing <laughs> two <Right>. coats. <laughs> I was down oh, at the county clerk's office the other day, and you would not believe what he's filed for. Those flower pots <laughs> are going to attract birds. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a nest. You got to hang them lower. <laughs> So now we're treated to the musical stylings of a drunk 16-year-old whose guitar is not improving his chances of getting laid at this party while we look back in on the school. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, music note, let's get all the kids at this church lock in nice and quiet before we do the call to altar. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, so Chris catches up with Brandon to tell him that, you know, like his band is playing at the charity auction and that's a big deal, apparently. And, and it was because the other band dropped out and I wanted so badly for him to be like, yeah, some black guy threatened them with a gun. It's just Eli <laughs> going around town doing favors. <laughs> 
So, yeah. So, but the key on this scene is that this is the scene where Eli is going to fuck Chris up to get revenge on Brendan for not telling him where the treasure chest full of drugs was. So, like, Chris gets on his bike to head home from school and then, like, the van, like, falls in behind him. Yeah. They follow him. He's on a bike. They're following at bike speed in a van. Nobody's going to find that weird that they're just right <laughs> for. A, and then, like, the line of other people. I don't know. I wanted a scene where the like van is hiding behind a bush and then Chris goes behind it. <laughs> oh, so funny. Just remember, nothing sends a message like hitting someone's friend with a van. So if you don't like the stuff I tweet, remember, Noah and Heath both live in Pennsylvania, secret lair Pennsylvania. <laughs> and just start running over people in Pennsylvania. You'll get to us eventually. So yeah, so th- but that's their plan. They're going to run him over, but because this movie couldn't afford the stunt money there we just like they you hear the car the engine rev up and then we cut to the emergency room and and the cop is there because he's the only cop in town (laughs) exactly always yeah and he has assumed that this was purposeful so he's like you get a look at the guys and it's like wait why isn't any consideration being made that this might have been like an accidental hit and run i wanted so badly (laughs) for the cop to be like one more question did brandon do this (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the, the cop's asking these, like, leading questions about the bad guys, but he's, he's clearly trying not to sound racist because Mr. Stubbs is there and he's a black <laughs> character now. Like, would you describe them as the people who uh, easily sunburn or the opposite? <laughs> well, if these look. people who attacked you were watching a horror movie, would they warn the characters on the screen <laughs> to go in there? <laughs> And, uh, and and this is fairly important. Okay, so the cop – so now Brendan is there and all, all the characters in the movie are there around Chris or whatever. And the cop says, hey, well, you know, we had a couple of reports of a suspicious black van seen at the school driving away really fast or whatever. Now, of course, Brendan knows who that is at this point, right? He's like, oh, it must have been Eli. He does not tell the cop, oh, you know what? I know exactly who ran this guy over and where he lives. Yeah. There's never going to be a reason why he didn't do that. So everything that happens from this point on, honestly, everything that's happened up to this point, but everything that happens from this point on is because he's just being a dick. And and now we cut to him in the the school lawnmower shed Mm -hmm. uh, making a shank. And I wrote in my notes, (laughs) hey, Brandon, bud. You can, like, have or steal a knife now, buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't need in. to make shanks out of random pieces of metal anymore. Yeah, right. You got a kitchen now, pal. Also, right. uh, this is where Natalie comes in, and they're about to have the third greatest scene in all of cinema history. But I wanted so badly for her to sneak up behind him and for him to accidentally stab her. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of this is just comedy shenanigans while he tries to hide her body. <laughs> you're so much better at making movies than these people <laughs> yeah but okay and by the way if you're wondering you know what this shank is uh, uh, about just go ahead and keep wondering that there will never be a reason why he was making either just like what could he be doing when she comes up that's all hard and prisony uh making a shank yeah oh, au contraire noah that will come back that shank very much will come back we'll get to it all right I'm, it? I'm, yeah i'm, I'm oh, pretty yeah. curious where it where, where that will be yeah, so yeah, yeah. So Natalie shows up to apologize to him for his friend getting hit by a van or whatever. Um, and, and, and we have this weird like half-ass apology scene, but we don't know what anyone's apologizing for. They, they seem to be thinking like, you know, we're 45 minutes into the movie. You can assume that these, these, this couple has had some trouble off screen at some point now. Um, and, and, and it's gotten awkward or maybe it was a sex thing, maybe shot off on her thigh or, or whatever. But they seem to think they're resolving a conflict that I don't know we're aware of. No, it no. was just her walking away from the scene when he said, I never murdered anybody. And, and I want to read my notes in order here because I, she's like, look, when you said, that you never murdered anybody. And I, this is when I'm like, oh my God, she murdered the cop's son. She murdered the cop's son. So then he runs after her and these are literally my notes. So what happens is she goes, look, I got pregnant last year and I wrote in my notes in order. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh yes. Please. Yes. Yes. It's abortion regret. That yes. is her secret. 
Yes, oh, yeah. that's it, the reveal. He hasn't killed anybody, but she has. <laughs> <laughs> it's an abortion movie. It's like an hour of misdirection, but now it's an abortion movie. <laughs> and that's a good magic trick. None of us saw that coming. No. <laughs> yeah. I thought she killed the Stubbs' son. Yeah, you were going deep into this and didn't see it coming. Yeah. And of course, she's regretted it ever since, just like almost all women don't. So, and also, this is an actual line. Now, he wanders up and she starts giving this confession or whatever. And he just kind of stares like, I can't believe that these are actual lines of this fucking movie. And as she says to him at one point, she says, but please don't tell me faith can fix me because I've cut myself off from God forever. Just randomly throws that out in the middle of her monologue. He's like, yeah, I, ha I haven't said anything in this scene yet. I just... <laughs> I just ran after you. And don't and tell me to think of a number between one and ten, because it's four. We both know it's four. <laughs> <laughs> so now that this movie has started to fulfill its promise of being damaging as well as horrible, I'm confident enough to take a break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Eli find the thing he thinks Brendan knows where it is, I think is what he was trying to do originally? Will the thing with the house factor into the plot at all, or was it just filler? Does anybody know if that actress playing Natalie has started doing porn yet? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the meandering conclusion of King's Faith. Yo, Bren. Bren. What? 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 It is a no dream, yo. What, what, what are you guys doing here? We're here to talk about the money, dog. Uh, uh, wait, what just... How long were you guys watching me sleep just now? I don't know. A couple of hours, maybe? Sleep like an angel, what? dog. I feel like I watched a world of worries pass across your brow just now. Uh, okay, that that that's creepy. What? Hey, hey man, only creepy thing about us is we're going to be creeping on you if you don't get us our money, dog. We know Tuck kept liquor, cane, weed, booze, no. What? No, you know, like, porn, no. Also, he has some of them pumpkin spice Oreos in there. Rose, if you will. Uh, look, guys, I, I, I don't know. No, 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 I, nah, I, man, no. I ain't hearing that. I saw you sleep, dog. I saw you toss and turn, and when your forehead grew hot, I cooled it with the touch of my lips. You sleep like a man troubled. Uh, that. Seriously, man? Yeah, man. There ain't no truer self than the one that has escaped the mortal world and dances among the stars of dream, man. Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna go. Come on, man. This was supposed to be a scarier thing. Let me know, though, if you remember where Tuck kept his Batman comics, though. All right? Yeah. Uh, no problem. Good to see you guys, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I thought, like, ain't nothing scarier than love that dares show its face. You gotta cut it out, Rish. You just need to listen to me next time. Damn. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandon. Oh, man, not again. Uh, hello, officer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say goodbye, I say hello. So look, last night, little old lady gets her groceries, slips on the ice, bam, lands on a reefer. You know anything about that? Uh, I'm sorry, she landed on a reefer? Oh, what? you're sorry? Why are you sorry if you didn't do anything, huh? You slip her the pills, huh? Was it you selling the reefer pills, injecting toke, sweet, dank dabs, huh? Were you, were you toking um, on dabs? N no, just... None of that is real. You're just, those oh, you're words calling are... me a liar now. I don't like being called a liar, Brandon. Let me get one thing straight. You committed crimes. You know what that makes you? Makes you a crime machine. You hear that? That's a crime alarm. Whoop, whoop, choo, choo. All aboard the crime train. Population, you, Brandon. You. I, I have yeah, no that's what I idea what. You play fantasy uh, football, Brandon? Um, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, you know who I got on my roster this week? I got Darshell Clampton. I got Tree Sean Keeping On and a bag of wet peanuts. I know numbers. What? What's happening here? I just want you to know, I got my eye on you, Brandon. See the Red Robin. That is, if you aren't chicken. <laughs> and we're back for more breakdown, and we're going to start with Mom hanging sheets on the clothesline just like nobody has done in 50 years when suddenly... Eli comes up from behind her. Not our Eli. The In the movie, the character named Eli comes up from behind her. Though, to be fair, her reaction makes a lot more sense if it was me, Eli, coming up behind her. Because <laughs> she is terrified of black people? I, she, she, I, I, <laughs> 
Yeah, just randomly. Like, he just shows up and he's just like, Brendan around. And she's like, oh, my God. Oh, you're so black. Oh, God. Oh, God. Take it all. Take all the laundry. And he's, like, helping her fold the laundry. Like, unless you know this character is the movie's villain, there is no reason for her to not be like, no, Brandon's not around. Are you one of his friends from Faith Club? Nice yeah. face tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then he has this weird monologue where he goes, look, criminals are like stray dogs. There's not enough TLC on the planet. And I wrote in my notes, I agree. How awesome was no scrubs, right? <laughs> One of them died in a car accident. <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> That's the first time I think my inaccuracies will have pissed off a large percentage of our female <laughs> listeners. I think I'm an equal opportunity offender. There you go. <laughs> and and then we got to cut back to Brendan and Natalie being all white and boring. Like the scene opens, they're sitting in the car and, and, and Natalie goes, my mom has this vision of what she wants me to be. And I'm like, if it's not naked acrobat, I'm checking out of this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> My mom wants me not to be a baby murderer, but I am, damn it. I am a baby murderer. <laughs> yeah. And then she kisses him. Well, okay, but I I, I want to point out, because they're, they're like really trying to harp on this whole, oh, her life was ruined because she had an abortion thing. But now we've basically admitted that it's not that she has a problem with having had the abortion. It's that her mom's religion has an issue with it, and it's driven a wedge between her and her mother. And I'm like, that's a problem with your mom's religion, not abortion. Yeah. Right? Read Freakonomics. You're helping the economy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess all this abortion talk got her all turned on, so she kisses him. She's like, you don't worry, I abort, you know? Yeah. You don't even have to wear a condom. Yeah, Zach pulls back, and I'm like, dude, she broke up with her boyfriend, she puts out, get yours. What, you get so much pussy in jail, you don't need any of that? <laughs> I also love to that the camera catches him, the actor doing a very obvious tit check as she like pulls away, and you can just like the actor has the oh my god boobies, oh my god boobies look on his face so much. So anyway, so yeah, so we 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 linger with her like he drops her off, and we linger with her long enough to emphasize that her and her mom have a complicated relationship. Well, she walked in and she was like, Mom, and I wanted Eli to be in the kitchen so badly, just like <laughs> making himself a cup of tea. Why, hello there. Do you know where Brandon is? I am omnipresent. <laughs> <laughs> the secret of this movie is that I have a twin. <laughs> I don't know why Eli's Ben Carson. <laughs> he just suddenly became... Yeah. I just miss him. <laughs> so I guess Brendan finds out that Eli's been around, like, fucking around with his foster mom or whatever. So he calls up Eli. He's like, meet me at the cemetery because that would be a creepy place for us to meet. You know, make a point. Right. Meet me at Tuck's grave. Yeah, And they right. meet at Tuck's grave. And I wanted him so badly to be like, we buried it with Tuck. We got to dig him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they meet at the cemetery so the gangster can wax philosophical about gangsta shit. And uh, the plan here, Brendan's going to talk Eli into being a Christian instead of a drug dealer at the cemetery. That That's seems to be his plan. plan. Yeah. And doesn't work. Yeah, and instead they beat the shit out of him, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, okay, they beat him up right after he says the line, like, he goes, I promise, Eli, there's a hope so great it changed me, and it can change you. And then they beat the fuck out of him, and I'm like, yes, I've wanted to reach through every movie where someone says something like that and beat the fuck out of me. You're doing it for me. So, but of course, we don't get to watch him get beat up. The, the the screen just blacks out, and then we have to cut to foster mom waking up to the sound of Brendan being unconscious in the yard. Yeah, she goes, you hear that sound? It sounds like Brendan isn't home by curfew. Wait, wait, <laughs> there he is. He's on the lawn. <laughs> All right, and then we get like one of the most contrived and weird, bizarre motivations in this entire fucking movie, right? Because they come outside, the foster parents do, and he's all beat to fuck. And she's like, I'm going to call 911. And the dad goes, no, don't call 911. They'll put him away. Is there what? a law what? against getting the fuck beat out of you in this universe? Yeah. What What are they worried is going to happen? Like, is there a bruise on your face? You came to this hospital. You hiding crack underground. You hiding crack underground? <laughs> I feel underground? like you know, I feel like you're hiding crack underground. your chest full of crack somewhere. <laughs> So, and then, of course, the next day, day, like early in the morning while dad is sleeping at his side, mom's calling Detective Dwyer to tell him about that bloody kid on her lawn like a bitch. Yeah, she's narking him out. Yeah, because she doesn't want to have a dying kid in her garage like a <laughs> like a bitch. 
Well, she's an atheist now because God murdered her son, mm -hmm. and that's why she's being a bitch about the whole thing. Oh, well, right. I, I, I understand her, her bitchery. She has lost touch with Jesus. Yeah, I right. just don't get why they can't. Go to the hospital. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Atheists don't believe in hospitals because we can't see them, damn it. We can't <laughs> see them. Well, and this is such a weird fucking scene, all right? This is one of those moments where clearly they just like control V'd in some Christian discussion because they're in the middle of talking about like he's like, you know, he's like, we have to help the kid. And she's like, why did God let my son die? And he's like, oh, I didn't even bring the keys. I don't even have them out of my pocket yet. That you, was You've got to jingle these keys. <laughs> you've got to jingle these keys. And she's like, no. Everything is chaos. Look at this book. It just <laughs> fell together. The words, they all fell onto the pages, okay? <laughs> and this is where she also says that she's turned, that God turned her back on God, or that she's turned her back on God because God turned her back, his back on her. And I wrote, maybe your son shouldn't have turned your back on that guy who shot him, huh? Oh, Zing. Damn. Eli one, oh. lizard Jada Pinkett Smith zero. <laughs> that was worth all the trouble you had with the pronouns there. That was amazing. <laughs> Take that, Komodo dragon. <laughs> Mom's like, uh, you know, maybe the only answer is that there is no answer. To which dad says, look, we can turn away from this kid or we can turn to him. And I'm like, are we back on that conversation now? Did pages <laughs> stick together in the script? What the fuck just happened? You have a feeling that during this movie, a lot of people yelled, keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Yeah, yeah. So the undertone here, what we're supposed to be learning is if you lose your faith, there's no reason to help people. What we're actually learning is if you lose your faith, there's no reason to deny a child proper medical care when they need it. Then we get a little bit of dad trying to bandage Brendan with scotch tape, yeah. which obviously is not going to work very well. And then he walks outside, dad does, and he sees Eli's van in, in his driveway and he kind of starts to chase, but Eli drives away. Why is he there in the, why is Eli there right, in the first yeah, place? Exactly. How is spying useful here? Well, especially visibly in the van that they know. You Badly know? spying, but any spying makes no <laughs> sense. Now guys, I want to make sure when we beat him up and we left him on the lawn, let's go check and see if he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know what? I feel like we didn't, there wasn't any internal bleeding. We didn't really, we didn't do our best guys. Come on. Right. And uh melting Danny Glover like chases the car down. I wanted him so badly to just be like, we can rebuild him. <laughs> <laughs> Grabs the bumper, rips the frame off the tr uh, the van. Yeah, that'd be great. So, of course, all Natalie knows now is that, that Brendan got the fuck beat out of him. So she goes to confront Zach to see if he's the one that beat Brendan up. And this conversation over and over again, I'm just going back 30 seconds. Back 30 seconds. What am I missing here? <laughs> right, exactly. Zach's supposed to kind of be a bad guy, right? But he's making a great point about religion, right? He's, he's like, if you're a crazy person and then you read the Bible, you become a crazy person with a God rationale, which is extremely dangerous. This should be on a bingo card. This should be one of our bingo squares. Bad guy <laughs> making a great point about how religion is dangerous and seen. That's yeah, a square. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. And she doesn't respond to anything close to the words that come out of his face. No. He's like, look, these people use God as an excuse to clean the slate, but they're still the person they were. They're just a person they were with an idea of being high and mightier than thou. And she's like, I don't even like sandwiches. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> like an actual line in this. And this is this made its way to the preview. Probably the greatest line in the movie. She goes. What do you have a problem with? That he's a convicted felon or that he has a relationship with God? <laughs> what? Um, like, first of all, that's not an either or. You can uh, have a problem with both of those things. And he's like, the first one. Definitely the first one. <laughs> <laughs> And this amazing moment, he goes, look, he's just got this God thing. And she goes, God's not a thing. God's not a thing. He's super duper serial. Okay. Yeah. She, her actual line is stop calling it a thing. It's not a thing to him. It's a way of life. And I'm like, a way of well, life is a this, thing. That's still a noun. <laughs> Falls <laughs> under the category about? of thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So he, as she's walking away, he calls out, you sound like a Bible thumper for no goddamn reason. To which because, she responds, I'd rather sound like someone else than you. Boom. Gotcha. Zing. Good one, <laughs> Drop <Natalie>. the mic. <laughs> The, the writer's room was that that must have just been a placeholder. They were like, I'd rather be someone else than 
Him. Okay, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, fix, we'll, we'll, we'll go fix. back. We'll come up with something clever. <laughs> Like, like the we'll actress could just accidentally do better than that, I'm sure. Yeah, she might as well read bracket at the front and the back of that line. <laughs> <laughs> so mom heals Brendan a little more. And this scene is very odd because I think what we're supposed to be getting out of this scene is that, like, she's starting to care for him and feel maternal about him. But what, like, she's playing is she wants to fuck this kid. Oh, yeah, this, this is, is how I would treat Zach's wounds. This is a very <laughs> strange scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, of course, um, Russell shows up again for breakfast because he's just in the habit of showing up at their house in the morning. Right. Yeah. Well, his line, again, this is so clumsily written. It's beautiful. He goes, hey, I was just passing by and I smelled that omelet. Um, can, can I have some? And she, and she, without at a moment's hesitation, is like, absolutely. And he's like, so you call my office? Caller ID is a thing. And she's like, all right, right. I knew you didn't just smell an omelet as you drove your way to work <laughs> as a police officer. <laughs> Yeah, and, and mom and dad, dad gets in on the lie for a second, too, and they're horrible at it, so the cop's super suspicious, as he should be, because they're acting like, they're, they're acting like there's a woman putting lotion in the basket downstairs, uh, Right, it's terrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's an amazing, again, terribly written movie, but really worth it for all of these moments. They linger too long after the lie, and I wanted him so badly to be like, do you guys play fantasy football? <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, Deshaun Watkins this year. He's been on the bench the whole time. Can you believe it? No. Well, did you say Watkins? Was that the last name? Because that's the yes, last name of a fantasy is. football relevant player in a totally few weeks, what maybe. I said. It's been on the bench the yeah. entire year, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I know quite a bit. You should let me play me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before we can finish that and lose a couple of more uh, uh, patrons, uh, we got to get to some more evil van stuff. Okay, so... At this point, I guess Eli and his crew are going to burn down the charity house that the, these kids have not yet purchased just to be the bad guys. Like, I don't even they, understand what their motivation is how, now. How is this helpful? It, and also, this drug dealer gang doesn't have $3,500 to fucking buy it or another one like it? Nothing? Yeah, right? Yeah, I have no idea. Eli's motivation seems to just be destroying the things that Brandon likes. Like, he knocks an ice cream. I hear you like rum raisin. He just pulls out a gallon and throws it in the garbage. <laughs> Wasted. <laughs> Tell me where the big box of drugs is. And, of course, like, in the background, there's these thunderclaps that are just screaming, there is no such thing as over the top, according to this director. And uh, apparently... Abandoned house in the ghetto burns down is breaking news in this town. So they see that in the morning over breakfast. Well, again, she can't just tell him what she's exactly about to do. As he walks in, it goes, breaking news. The house that Brandon's been fixing up was burned down by the bad guy last <laughs> night and turn off the TV. And then she and then she goes instead of like, so who almost beat you to death? She goes, hey, uh, someone burned down your clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> you want a snack? I was just writing like, I can't believe I'm going to spend another half hour of my life on this goddamn movie. Wow. But the, and this is also the post-sex scene with mom. He, he like walks up, wakes up, and he's like <laughs> smoking a cigarette. He slaps her on the ass. What's going on? She's like, your house burned down. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love it too because they have to have the scene where he like goes to see the burned out shell of a house, but they clearly could not afford to like burn out a house. So they just put some black paint not on even. The, it's just CGI burn marks because oh, they're it's, identical. It, yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. House looks like Eli dressed as a chimney sweep. Yes, it's not, <laughs> not realistic. But why not just skip that scene? We know that the house burned down. We'll get it. So, yeah. And also, okay, so now I guess, like, you know, he's turned his corner or whatever. So he's loading shovels up into his car when Natalie comes across now, Natalie shows up, and he's loading multiple shovels into his car. She does not even mention that fact. Yeah, she's like, where are you going? He's like, no, we're just helping my friend Adnan take care of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I love it. So, yeah, so she's bought him a cross necklace because he Jesus is so much, but he's mad at her or something still. From remember when we didn't know what was going on, it's still going on. 
Yeah. Also, Christian movie bingo. Like, I feel like we definitely need to add this to the card. Woman gets a man a very feminine piece of jewelry, but Christians don't know the difference between like a cross for men and a cross that's very clearly from Kay's jewelers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess what we're supposed to be getting from this scene is that like he's running off the people that are close to him so that they won't get hurt too. But what, how it actually comes across is forget about me, Natalie. I'm too brooding and complex. Yeah. So- I wrote my notes. You should be scared of me. Look how bad I got the shit kicked out of me. I'm dangerous. I could kick the shit out of myself at any moment. <laughs> so then in the, in the following scene, we got uh, 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 Papa Stubb, the the um, foster dad, showing up in his room. Again, just you put a lock on that motherfucker. And he's like packing all his stuff up. So like Papa Stubb is all worried about him. Like, what the hell are you doing, kid? And this is where we learn that this entire time – he did know where the secret money and drug stash was. And liquor. And and liquor and <laughs> yeah, right. Really nice bottle of sky vodka in there. So he that. got his buddy hit by the van for no purpose which just so so that so that he could like go get a truck full of heroin when he needed. I don't I, I like it, He didn't want the heroin. He just wanted to keep the heroin off the street. Yeah, okay, first of all, well, like, I love this idea, this concept that you can just keep drugs good forever underground. Like, yeah, like, they've had weed buried in the ground for three years. That's going to be some great weed, y'all. <laughs> right, and, and drug-dealing gangs generally have other ways of getting drugs besides underground. Yeah, besides digging like, up treasure you, chests. You've, you've yeah. prevented I want to see ex- that meeting where they were like, look, Eli, why don't we just, you know, raise some money and go buy some more different drugs? And he's like, no, no, those we drugs? follow this motherfucker around until we find the drugs that we are looking for. But like the gas in this van, man, we could have already bought all that heroin. I just feel like I feel like we're going backwards here, man. Yeah. And, and, and then we have this just bizarre conversation between the dad and the, and, and, and the kid, you know, where he's like, uh, you know, trying to give him his whole, like, uh, you know, like paternal wisdom moment or whatever. But all the advice he gives him is just completely inactionable, random Bible quote shit. Yeah, he's just like, you got to let God fight for you. And I was like, is this like a cousin named God who's actually going to go beat up Eli? This is confusing. He also keeps talking about it like, you don't know what you can become. And for a moment, I fantasized that like, Brendan can go Super Saiyan. And I was really into that. But no. <laughs> I was thinking maybe that was that was where the wear pit bull thing would come in. But no. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, dad's telling him to... Not use logic and reason to yeah. solve this. Just have faith. God's going to fix it. Uh, also, the the logical thing is for you to talk to the police. That's his advice. Well, right, right. So at the very end of this whole long babbling Jesus monologue, he says, "Oh, and also you should talk to my friend who's a cop." And I'm just like, that is like like the scientist in Act Three saying, "Hey, why don't we just hit the remote off switch on the world destroying robot?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, fuck! Why didn't we just think of that earlier?" Right. Yeah. And of course, we we have to see him like look to his Bible before the scene ends, you know, trying to like figure out the conflict of do I call the police and make all the bad stuff stop with no penalty to me whatsoever? Or do I do something dumb instead and make this movie keep going? And of course, he chooses the latter. And then we have to very quickly establish now Russell, like, I guess because he's called Russell, he's like, hey, come and help me out. But then the kid drives off to go handle things on his own before Russell can get there. So we have to have the little scene where, like, Russell shows up and, he, you know, to help because it turns out he does have a heart of gold after all. And in the middle of this, like, well, do you know what kind of vehicle he's driving? Do you have the license plate or whatever? All of a sudden, and for no reason, the foster dad just randomly throws in the whole, like, it's not your fault my son died. <laughs> and it's, right. so, it's so nonsensical and amazing because at one point Russell goes, I know these kids. I've seen inside their hearts. And I wanted him to be like, each time I take one of their lives, I gain their strength <laughs> and their memories. There can only be one. And then they have a sword fight cuts off Russell's hand. Come on. So many ways to improve this movie. <laughs> oh, shit. This movie has no idea what it's about. And I'm with it. <laughs> So, yeah, so now we go to the creepy industrial park to dig up the gangsta treasure chest, I guess. Yeah, and they buried their drugs right next to a 
business with like big fences, like danger, keep out, and definitely security cameras. They're like 10 feet from this fence. They get out of the van. He's like, hey, guys, good beating. Uh, th- uh, this time, uh, left side a little bit more, okay? Because the right side ooh, is still <laughs> sore. And there's just, honestly, there are 10 minutes of digging and where is the box minutia. Oh, God. Where Eli criticizes people's digging technique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, your time. digging technique needs work. I don't like to give notes, but I'm just saying, like, I know that we got people around. And I don't want to embarrass you. I would usually take you to the side, but I feel like this is an action situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, I wrote my notes. Why doesn't E dig? And then I realized, oh, he's on gun holding duty. Yeah, right. Well, OK. And so this is the part in the movie, according to the fucking script by numbers that they were working off of. This is the part in the movie where the main character works something clever out, outwits the bad guys, and like at the last second, it's like, oh, they drink up the cocaine and oh, the cops show up or whatever, something like that. But this movie can't handle that. So apparently his plan was to let them dig the stuff up and then while they were ooing and eyeing about how much cocaine they had, beat them up with a shovel. Attack them with a shovel in the clumsiest fight choreography you can imagine. <laughs> oh, God. Not, yeah, not attack them in a critical fucking portion of their body with the shovel, mind you. Well, the shovel doesn't matter at all. He hits several people with a shovel and they're just like, oh, someone else's turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, like, sets it up on the ground so they step on it. It hits him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> And this is where they both go for the gun at the same time, and he stabs uh, Eli in the back of the hand with the shank from before. Oh, I I must have missed that. Mm, That's because you don't follow shanks in movies as closely as I do. (laughs) (laughs) I love to because he gets the gun, and then he turns to, to Eli and starts lecturing him on family values at gunpoint. He's like, he's going like, families are supposed to care about each other, Eli, not just think of themselves. I'm like, what the fuck is happening now? And then they, he's like, get out of here. And I'm like, oh, okay. But then they take the drugs and go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's like, the one thing that this character has said he wanted, he's just like, he's got the gun and he's just like, and, and <laughs> as they're leaving with the drugs, Eli's like, hey man, we're going to kill you. And I'm like, hey, Brandon, that this ain't over sounds like a great reason to shoot someone in the head or at least deny them their drugs and money and liquor. (laughs) Well, the actual line, he goes, this isn't over, Brandon, and you know it. And I'm like, he could have just said Noah. He could have because I've I've been looking 15 more minutes of this shit. So Uh, no, it's like the cops breaking up the keg party and being like, all right, kids, get out of here. And then they're like. All right, we're just going to drag the keg. With us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, like no, okay, go ahead, cool. Go ahead, no, yeah, it's right, fine. Right, right. No, I get it. I get it. This ain't over. <laughs> <laughs> But now he's got my favorite gun, so... Yeah, right, right. And, of course, we have to watch him labor over it for several minutes before he decides to throw it into the sea. And it's symbolic, and I get it and everything, but it's like, that's just a gun you stole from someone. That's not, like, the guns. Right. I wrote wrote my notes. Goodbye, Gunny, my dearest friend. (laughs) That's why we're having this scene. (laughs) Also, I wanted it so badly to, like, hit a rock and shoot him in the face. (laughs) That's how this movie, when we do the crazy billionaire money where he's a, a were pit bull and he can go Super Saiyan and there's lots more porn in it, it ends with him just throwing that and then pop, blah, and the cop's like, oh yeah, no, that's super dangerous. That is not the way to dispose of a firearm. Not the way to dispose of a firearm. Oh shit. And so like, apparently there's still shit to wrap up because all of these plots they seem to think were plots. So now we got to cut back to Papa Stubb cleaning off his old foosball table because I guess now they're going to donate it to the thing that the detective was going to do. Um, and, you know, and, and I guess this is also that they can like Mama Stubb can come out and say that she loves and accepts the white kid after all. And then they can play foosball in their son's memory. Uh, wrong. Play foosball incorrectly, wrong. Incorrectly. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. You're not allowed to spin the poles. Everybody knows you can't spin the poles. Nope. You oh, you can't spin the poles? No, you can't. <laughs> How come that's, you can't spin the poles? Because that's called cheating. It's against the rules. <laughs> there are rules. Mm. The game stops being fun if everybody stops starts ignoring the fucking rules. Agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, oh, and then we got to wrap up the Natalie story. So we, we show Natalie, like, looking at the cross she brought him and then coming out to tell her mom about the fetus that she murdered. 
yeah, exactly. I, and they cut away for her. She just goes, hey, mom. And I wanted so badly for her to be like, I killed a baby. Let me go back up. Sorry, let me back up. <laughs> and apparently, again, we're not done. There are There's more to wrap up. So now we have to resolve the suspicious cops story, I guess. Do we? Yeah. No. <laughs> Do we this really? is so stupid. The cop walks out of the police station and he's doing awkward Christian movie. I can't do space work for three seconds. He's like high fiving people as he walks out of the police station. <laughs> hey, Larry, fat Larry, how you doing? And he goes, huh? What are the odds that you would be right here at this police station when I was just talking to you? And the guy goes, I don't know. I think it'd probably be a thousand to one. And I'm like, well, no, a thousand. It's not a thousand to one. Like, it's not like. You had a thousand parking spots and he had to choose one. None of this is odd. It's fine. It's fine. Just tell you, him. You, tell you him the showed up here on purpose. So the odds are one. Yeah, exactly. It's not a coincidence here. You were waiting for him to come out. Yeah. And so this is where we learn that after Eli and his gang wandered off with a treasure chest full of drugs, they got pulled over and arrested. And now they're going to go to jail just like Brendan would have if he hadn't found him some Jesus. Yeah. So they better get each of these drug dealers a Bible and nothing else. Otherwise, <laughs> prison system will stop working. Yeah. So well. <laughs> and apparently, so this is the way they sell this scene is that Brendan is there to, quote, turn himself in. For what? Again. Getting the shit kicked out of him? Yeah. But <laughs> no idea. But yeah, but Officer Butch a Anderson Cooper decides he can't arrest him for the imaginary crime after all. And maybe he's a good kid anyway. And and they literally do the like smoking gun. Hey, one more thing, give them hell. <laughs> <laughs> they do literally. They yeah. do like three separate shitty like cliche <laughs> goodbyes. <laughs> right. It's incredible. Again, like this movie's super boring. But if you watch it for this movie being terrible, this is a ton of fun. Put it on at a party. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then, of course, we have to get him coming home to Papa Stump and Mama Stub. Um, and they love him like they were, he was their very own. And I wrote in my notes, hooray, it's over. Oh, wait, we still need Natalie to show up, don't we? Because I feel like I've earned the credits, but I haven't. Right. But when he left, they were afraid he was going to go kill those guys. And they don't go like, hey, did you kill those guys? She's just like, have some breakfast. There's nothing, there's yeah. no <laughs> moment of like, what happened? What did you do? They're just like, all right, bacon? <laughs> Right, I guess they just assumed, well, it must have worked out all just fine because of God or whatever. So then we cut to the bachelor and bachelorette auction thing so that he and Natalie can get together and make up from the whatever thing they meant to put in the script and then forgot to. Yeah, so uh, Brendan sees Natalie come in across the crowded room and like, I just wanted somebody to blow a huge vape cloud between them for a second. <laughs> and they have their little... Those thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he goes back in the VO to, like, everybody has their number. Remember I said that at the beginning? So now, you know, it's like it's over because I said the same. Yeah. Thing. And, well, and she tells Zach that she told her mom about the abortion. And he's like, great. All right. We can have sex now. Um, <laughs> are you into older black women? <laughs> How would you feel about a little chocolate, a little reverse Oreo? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's like, and then he goes like, you know, if you stand firm in your faith, anything is possible. Even being a person, an unexceptional person like me, that we decided we we're going to make a movie around. Like, because like, and ultimately, like, we've gotten to the end of this movie. Nothing has happened, right? I was so surprised that this didn't end with the end question mark. Like, just from the editor who was like, I mean, this is all the footage they gave me. Export. <laughs> Unfucking real. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that we've ever watched a movie where so little happened over such a long period of time. Um, and then I, I do want to throw this one out there. After I watched the movie, I was looking at the IMDb page for it, as I am wont to do. And other than listing the soundtrack under trivia, which I found oddly pleasing, <laughs> there wasn't much there. Uh, but I did find this eight star review that I quite liked. Okay, so it reads in part. I love this movie. I thought it sent a good message to the audience. I am not giving this move sick an eight stars just because I helped with it. I truly think it deserves an eight <laughs> rating. This film could not have been done without all the outside help. I never knew what went into a movie till I helped with this one. <laughs> now, 
as podcasters, I think we all recognize a then stop asking me to rate your shit review when we see one. So Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> so rather than measuring this movie with thumb stars or fart analogies, I want you to imagine that your buddy made this movie. You know him since you were kids. You're really close, whatever. And he's been bothering you to review it on IMDb for a long time. So to close things off, I'd like to hear the sarcastic 10 star IMDb review that you would put for this movie to shut him up. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, this movie gets a rating of 10. Uh, if you don't agree with me, check out Rotten Tomatoes. That's what I thought. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 10 stars. Great movie. I can really see you worked hard. My favorite part of this movie is the actors all did really great. More words until iTunes lets me hit post. Banana, 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 badan. A good movie. Movie is good. There we go. And then you hit send because you don't need the D. And well, that's going to do it for a review of King's Faith. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to give you something to give thanks for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what is on deck. Oh, well, we know you made it through a hard Thanksgiving with some family, and we know some folks really needed a treat. So next week, we have a movie we have been saving literally for a year plus at this point. Blood Freak. Now, this is a Christian movie, because if you describe the plot, it's going to not sound like that so much. <laughs> it is a Christian movie, absolutely. It's about a man... <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only a, words you can say about the plot of this movie that aren't hilarious. I'm sorry. So. Who goes to a hippie commune and gets addicted to drugs. Marijuana and specific. Marijuana. <laughs> marijuana, tainted marijuana, special super strong marijuana. And when that marijuana is combined with him eating special laboratory <laughs> experimental turkey, he turns into a murderous blood drinking turkey who still fucks his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> yep. this is i think and i know i say this all the time this is the best movie we've ever watched it what? is the most fun to watch <laughs> it's on youtube it's free and it's the one where the guy like introduces it at the beginning it's like 50 minutes you must watch this movie yeah absolutely like if you enjoy bad movies this movie is why right this was made in 1972 they were more or less taking this seriously when it was made right this is not like the tongue-in-cheek like remember when you saw movies that were this bad this is really truly one of those movies yeah and it is beautiful yeah so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 66 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Down, 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 down. Please don't sue us. Brendan started dressing up like the Stubbs' dead son, Lewis, and it wasn't weird. Mom loved it. Natalie went on to do porn, hopefully. Eli spent all the Patreon and ad money on a date with Zach. Zach was never the same again. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.